Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to be making three different no boil pasta bake recipes that are vegan, cozy, delicious, and gluten-free optional. I make them gluten-free, but if you eat regular pasta, you could totally do that too. So I posted a dump and bake casserole video on my YouTube channel a few months ago, and that one was more bean and rice recipes, but then I found out that you can do the same concept with pasta. So you just add dry pasta, your veggies, and whatever sauce slash flavoring you want into a casserole dish, mix it up, bake it, and then it comes out of the oven and it's perfect and you basically put in like minimal effort, have minimal dishes to do, and you just sit back, relax, watch your Netflix while your pasta cooks, and then you get to enjoy a cozy and hearty meal. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to do three different variations of it, so let's get into the recipes. First up, we're going to be making a chickpea noodle casserole. So it's kind of like a chicken casserole, but instead of chicken, we're using chickpeas because we're vegan over here. So first to make our sauce, we're going to add some soaked cashews to a blender along with nutritional yeast and some spices. I'm using smoked paprika, poultry seasoning, garlic powder, and black pepper. Then we're going to add a tablespoon of chicken flavored broth. It's vegan, it's just an imitation broth. You can also use the store-bought broth packages you get from the store or vegetable broth, but this really helps with the chickeny flavor of this dish. From there, we're going to add some water to our blender, then cover it up and blend it until it's smooth and creamy. So oftentimes casseroles or shortcut casseroles are made with cans of cream of etc. soup. So this is sort of my workaround around that and it's a vegan and wholesome way to make it. So now we're going to be making our casserole. You're going to need a nine by 13 or similar size dish. And at the base, we're going to add our pasta. I'm using rotini. Then we're going to add some diced onion, some sliced celery, some diced carrot, some peas, I'm using frozen, you don't need to thaw them. And then we're going to add some chickpeas. And then here I am using a spoon to mix everything together to make sure all of my veggies are evenly combined and nicely distributed throughout the pan. You do want the level of ingredients to be even across the pan so it cooks evenly. Then now we're going to pour that blended mixture on top of the pasta, no need to warm it up. Everything's gonna warm up in the oven. And then the last step is just to use a spatula or spoon to press down any pasta noodles that are above the liquid. You want them to be totally submerged here so they cook nice and evenly. So then we're just going to cover this with aluminum foil or parchment paper followed by aluminum foil and bake it in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 50 minutes. And then once it's done, you're going to remove it from the oven, carefully remove that aluminum foil, make sure it doesn't steam burn you or anything. And as you can see here, it looks like there's dry noodles on the top, but they're still fully cooked um, from the steam. And what you wanna do now is just gently mix the casserole together because some of the sauce sort of settles to the bottom during the baking process. But as you can see here, once you mix everything with a spoon, you get it nice, thick, and creamy, a coated noodles and chickpeas and veggies. And then it's just time to serve and enjoy. I love this recipe because to me, it sort of reminds me of a cross between like a vegan chicken pot pie. It has all those yummy, cozy flavors in it, but it's pasta instead of pie crust. So it's even heartier and more delicious and yummy. And it's just like the perfect cold weather food in my opinion. I've made this recipe several times and loved it every time. So you can top yours or serve yours however you'd like. I just added some freshly ground black pepper to mine for a little bit of kick, but then you can dig in and enjoy. Next up, we're going to be making some no boil vegan mushroom stroganoff. I have a similar recipe to this on my blog, but it's a pot recipe. So this is more hands off. So to start again, we're going to make the sauce or flavoring for our pasta, but this time we're just going to do it in the pan. So I'm adding half of a cup of a dry white wine and some cashew butter. If you don't wanna use wine, you can use vegetable broth, but just start out with a small amount because now what we're going to do is whisk the cashew butter into a smaller, amount of liquid. Um, as you can see, it takes a little bit for it to emulsify and it kind of looks worse before it looks better. Um, you can do this in a blender if you want, but I just didn't want to get anything else dirty. So I'm just using my hand whisk to whisk this until it's nice and smooth. And like I said, you can use veggie broth, but just start with half of a cup. And then once you get a smooth and creamy sauce like this, it'll thin out a little bit more once it bakes in the oven and it won't be gritty, I promise. We're going to add some nutritional yeast and some ground black pepper. And then we're going to add in our broth. I'm using beef in imitation flavored broth. You can use vegetable broth as well, but this just helps it have more of a hearty flavor. So then you're just going to whisk everything until it's nicely combined. As you can see, the cashew butter sort of dissolves into the broth here. And then once we add our other ingredients, like I said, 
but the sauce will just continue to thicken. So we're going to add some dry rotini and I'm adding a sliced sweet yellow onion. Then we're gonna add mushrooms. I like to quarter my mushrooms because they're sort of replacing a meatier beef texture here. Um, if you would like to slice them and have them be more finely distributed throughout the casserole, that's fine, but I like the heartier bite. So then I'm just using a spatula to mix everything. And again, trying to make sure most or all of the pasta noodles are submerged in the liquid. Then we're just going to tightly cover this with aluminum foil and again, bake in the oven for around 45 to 50 minutes at 425 F. So after that, this pasta actually, when it comes out of the oven, will be a little bit more on the runny side, as you can see. But once you give it a good stir, it will thicken up and the pasta will absorb the broth after it sits for about five minutes. So this looks kind of brown and meh, but I promise it tastes so delicious and is so flavorful. But to brighten things up a bit, I like to top mine with some freshly chopped parsley and some black pepper again for some more brightness and a little bit of a kick. So then when you are ready to enjoy, you can just dish this up into your bowl. And again, I like to top mine with a little bit of parsley and more freshly ground black pepper. This is probably my all time favorite recipe that I've made. It's a little bit different from the one pot recipe because I added wine, so it adds more depth of flavor and richness, but it is so, so cozy and you gotta try it. Then now, last but not least, we are going to be making a no boil pesto pasta bake. So we're adding a little bit of brightness from some homemade vegan and nut free pesto and some yummy veggies as well. So again, in a nine by 13 or similar size casserole dish, we're going to start by adding half of a cup of pesto. I'm using a vegan nut free pesto. I just posted this recipe on my blog, but I'm going to be featuring it in an upcoming video too. So I'll just have the recipe linked below. We're going to add that to our dish along with some nutritional yeast and optional red pepper flakes if you want it to be a little bit more spicy. And then here we're just using regular old vegetable broth and adding it to our casserole dish. And then similarly, like we just did with the mushroom stroganoff, you're just going to whisk everything together. This will look a little bit more gritty if you will just because the pesto has some nice texture but once everything bakes you don't even notice it so then we're going to add in our rotini and then for this recipe i decided to add some tomatoes and some sliced mushrooms and some olives if you don't like olives you can leave them out don't come for me and we're just going to mix everything together again try to keep the pasta noodles as submerged as possible and then we're going to cover this and bake in the oven. If you don't like these veggies or you wanna use different veggies, you can totally swap them out. I just recommend that the volume of the veggies stays relatively the same because if you add too many veggies, how many times can I say veggies in one sentence? The pasta won't cook evenly and you just wanna make sure that there's enough liquid for the pasta. So again, once you cook this in the oven for about 45, 50 minutes, you can remove the lid. And as you can see, it looks a little bit runny here, but trust the process is gonna thicken with time. So I'm just stirring everything here to make sure it's nicely distributed. And this is what it will look like after the pasta sits for about five minutes. As you can see, you have a nice and thick and creamy pesto sauce that's not necessarily as vibrant as it once was, but it is infused in the pasta and super, super delicious. So to add a little bit more freshness to the dish, I just chopped it with some freshly sliced basil, which is optional, but highly recommend it. And then all that's left to do is dig in and enjoy. All right, that's it for this video. As always, all of the recipes will be linked below. So if you want specific measurements or instructions or you want an image where you can save the recipe to Pinterest for later, you can go ahead and check that out. I would also really appreciate if you liked this video, left a comment down below and tell me you want more of these recipes. And if you have any flavor suggestions for future dump and bake casseroles, please leave them below as well. Cause I'm always down to make more. You guys seem to love them and I'm happy to oblige. Also, if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel and like what you see, feel free to click that little button right down there. I post one to two new recipes videos a week or lifestyle content videos you know quality videos that you should subscribe and watch and that's it for me so I hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you're having a good one also check out my cookbook and I look forward to seeing you in the next one bye